would you say is your like coaching philosophy? What makes you different from an O-line coach perspective than, than other guys? Um, that, that, and that's a really good question, man. I, I think because I, I just, I, I, I have a great way of getting to my guys, man. Um, you know, I, I try to put myself in their shoes as much as possible. Um, I, I don't try to make myself bigger than my room or bigger than my players. You know, I want them to know that I'm human. Um, because at the end of the day, I spend more time with my players than I spend with my family, my mother, my father, my brothers, my my, my son. And so I want them guys to know that I'm human. Um, so I, I always start there. Like, guys, I'm not I'm not any more important than you guys in this room uh, because I'm demanding so much from them. I'm demanding their time. I'm demanding effort every time, every player. I'm demanding energy. Like, I'm not asking for it. I'm demanding it. And so with that, man, I try to let them guys know that what I'm asking for is nothing that's not going to benefit you. Uh, I let them know I'm human. Um, I don't ever want my players to think I'm just their coach. You know what I'm saying? And, and when I talk to their families and their parents, I let them know, you know, um, you know when, they, when they commit to us or sign with us or, or commit to playing for me, um, they're not just getting the O-line coach. They're getting the Uber driver. You know, you're getting a personal chef. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're getting, you're yeah. getting an uncle. Like, you're getting a lot. I wear a lot of hats. And I think that's the bigger picture. Is that um you know when 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 guys feel that love and uh, that's the key word I guess to my philosophy is just, I bring love in there first in that room uh, when you when you bring love into it um you know it's a, it's a, it it, it kind of calms the room you know it's just like you know growing up as a child you know for, for those who you know have their mother and father you you know you you don't always like your mother and father you love them all the time you you I love my mom all the time it doesn't stop. But do I like her all the time? No, I don't, because she demands things from me. She demands me to do my chores, you know, to, uh, you know, to make sure I'm, I, I look the par, you know, things like that. And so it's the same thing in my room. I want to know, hey, guys, I love you all the time. That will never stop. But you're going to, it's going to be times where you don't like me because I'm going to ask you to do something that you may think you cannot do or you may not want to do. So my philosophy is not a, you know, a textbook definition. I, I start with love, man. And from there, I can. I can find a way to get those guys to play for the university, uh, asking them to do whatever it may be. If it's play in the rain, if it's play in the mud, if it's play on, you know, Thursday morning, 4 a.m. practice, my guys will be ready to do it because they know everything that we do is for the benefit of them. Sure. As you were talking, I thought, of, I don't know if you saw Jerome Tain, the Kansas State men's coach, men's basketball coach. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was, I mean, throughout March Madness was great. Right. And like, right. I think, I think we from our coaching network posted three different videos that I thought like, fat, <laughs> like right. connected with any coach anywhere. Right. Right. One thing he said, and I forget the, the initial thing that he said, but like, I don't want my guys just to know where my house is or my right. couch or something like that. He's like, I want them to know where the forks and knives are. Like, I want them to really feel like they know me. Right. And it, you know, as a position coach, it's it's similar to a basketball coach. You got right. 15-ish guys, right? right. Um, as a head football coach, and you got 105. Like yeah, that's tough. Pretty, it's tough, yeah, right? It's tougher. But I thought that was interesting, and how he like I never heard it in that way. I don't know if that's his right. line, or maybe a, a bunch of people have said it. But I thought that was interesting. I mean, it, it is because it sounds cliche to say well, I lead with love. It sounds so cliche, like okay, coach, everybody says that, but you can kind of watch. Even if you watch Mar March Madness, man, you can kind of see the players. In football, it's a little tough, but you can see it. But you can see who who likes playing or who loves playing for their coach. Like, you can see it. You know what I mean? I'm a diehard Tar Heel fan, Carolina fan to the day I die. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's times where it's like, you know, you, you're playing for the name on the back of the jersey instead of the name on the front. But there are other teams like uh like the Final Four we got now is like, you know, it's it's all over the place. But UConn and even women's basketball, uh, South Carolina, like, those girls love playing for Don Staley. Like you can see it. I can you can cut the volume down on the TV and just see that with their body language and how they're, you know, just communicating with their with their with the finger point and stuff that they love playing for Don Staley. So um it, it sounds cliche, but I think if you lead with love, man, it will you will you will get what you what you're trying to accomplish as a group, it will become a lot smoother. Uh, like I said, you can see it very well in basketball just because they're smiling, um, the body language of the players, even if they're losing. You know, they're still motivated to, you know, impress their coach or just play for that university. 